trap bar deadlift, barbell deadlift. Let's look at both of these. You'll see beginners often look and compare both of them because they see the word deadlift and they assume they're the same thing. They're not. They're two different movements. And once we can establish that mentally, we can then program them accordingly based on our goals. So let's just get that out right now. Barbell deadlift, trap bar deadlift, different movements. But let's talk about why they're different. So for starters, the trap bar deadlift is going to have your hands in a hanging down neutral grip. Now this is gonna change the overall mechanics of the lift, and why is this? Well, when the weight is in front of us in the barbell deadlift, we have to pull that bar in, which then shifts focus onto our posterior. So we're gonna get a lot more of our hamstrings, erectors, and glutes involved. Now for the trap bar deadlift, since the hands are down by the sides, we're gonna have a slightly different positioning. The weight is gonna be more spread across the front and the back of the body. So we're gonna have a lot more quad involvement, a lot of glute, and it's not gonna be so focused on the posterior portion of the body. Yes, we will have some posterior firing. However, we're gonna have a lot more quad involvement and a lot more glute involvement, depending on how low the trap bar is set and so forth. Because if we look at how these two movements are positioned and how the trap bar deadlift is actually set up, usually you'll have a higher handle setup and a lower handle setup. Now, when we look at these two positionings, you'll see that knee flexion is a little bit more prevalent in the trap bar deadlift. This would indicate that there's gonna be a lot more leg involvement compared to the barbell deadlift where the hips are sitting a little bit higher. And this is a fundamental difference to get through your head. So barbell deadlift, a little bit more posterior muscle focused, trap bar deadlift, anterior and posterior mix, but a little bit more heavier on the anterior side as we're gonna have a lot more quad involvement when we're driving through the ground and standing up the weight as the knee is gonna be flexed more. So when it comes to muscles worked with each of these exercises, it's gonna be slightly different and that's based on how the bar is positioned. So with the trap bar deadlift, you're generally gonna have a little bit more quad involvement, you're gonna have the glutes involved, you're gonna have the back and the upper back to stabilize the weight, and you're also gonna have some hamstrings as there is some hinging portion of the movement pattern. Now with the barbell deadlift, you're gonna have a lot more of a posterior focus. Since you're pulling that bar in, and basically the hips are the prime movers, you're gonna have hamstring, erector, glute involvement, upper back to stabilize and so forth, and lat involvement to pull that bar close. So when breaking down how to program these and how to look at their muscles, remember trap bar deadlift is gonna be a little bit more evenly displaced and that's because the hip and the knee are moving through greater ranges of motion. And then for the right side, so the barbell deadlift, it's gonna be a little bit more posterior focused because the hips are higher and they are the prime movers in this exercise. So before we dive into some of the common questions that get asked about the trap bar deadlift and the barbell deadlift, let's talk about some of their major benefits. So let's start with the trap bar deadlift. So one of my favorite benefits with this movement is that you can teach both the squat and the hinge movement patterning with this versatile piece of equipment. Since it is easily adjustable and so forth, we can teach clients and ourselves different movement patterns based on the adaptations we want. The second benefit that I love the trap bar deadlift for is that it can be a little bit useful for training both legs and back and glutes and so forth. And that really comes down to the versatility of it. You can adjust the height of how you're pulling it. You can change it into more of an RDL movement pattern so you can really hinge with the trap bar and so forth. Or you can perform just the traditional trap bar where it's more of a squat slash hinge movement pattern where you're gonna be targeting a lot of quad, glute, and upper back and so forth. The third benefit I like with the trap bar deadlift is that generally speaking, it is phenomenal for every level of athlete. It can be great for beginners to teach them but it could also be great for elite athletes who need a nice versatile piece of equipment that they can load a little bit heavily on and mitigate fatigue. Those are my favorite trap bar benefits. Now, when it comes to the barbell deadlift, what are some of the benefits? Number one, it's phenomenal for building your posterior. There's no debating that. It is one of the better exercises for true posterior growth. Now, you can obviously get posterior growth with the trap bar deadlift, but if we're trying to really hyper-focus on just the posterior, barbell deadlift is awesome. Second benefit that comes along with the barbell deadlift is that if you compete in strength sports, you need that sucker. It is one of the few movements that you need to practice regularly and often to improve in your sport, and that's because of the specificity of the ass of the sport and what the deadlift is going to do. The third benefit that comes along with the barbell deadlift is that it's just freaking awesome to do. There are a few things as mentally rewarding in the gym as picking up dead weight from the ground and hoisting it up. Now, obviously, that's some of my ego speaking, but it is one of those movements that I think provides us with a really great mental feeling when we accomplish them and do them afterwards, as long as we're obviously doing them within our means and well, 
But those are my three benefits with each. There are a ton of benefits that come along with both of these movements, but I'm not trying to keep you forever watching this video. So those are my favorite three. But let's dive into some common questions. Hey yo, if you haven't already, drop this video a like, drop the channel, subscribe. I sincerely appreciate it. Now let's get back to the content. So once we establish that these are two different movements and we understand the different musculature that will be worked with each, now we can run down a list of questions that a lot of folks have. So let's go through some common questions to make it a little bit easier for you and a little bit easier to digest. Which movement is best for beginners? Now, this is a very complex question, obviously. However, a lot of coaches, and myself included, will generally lean towards the trap bar deadlift. It's a little bit less stressful when it comes to the overall demands, especially from the posterior side of the body. And if you are trying to teach somebody how to hinge, you can do that with a trap bar deadlift in a manner that is gonna displace weight a little bit more evenly and be a little bit more feasible to digest. Plus you can adjust the handle so you can limit the range of motion that you have to lift the weight with. So it's just a little bit easier for beginners. Now that isn't to say beginners cannot barbell deadlift. However, if we're looking at the feasibility of teaching one movement over the other, the trap bar deadlift is generally gonna take the edge there. Now, the next question you'll often see is, which movement is best for sports? Again, we're gonna have to go towards the trap bar deadlift. Why is this? Well, if we look at how we move during different athletic endeavors, so when we're jumping, we're sprinting and so forth, it's a lot of forward movement, correct? So we have a lot of quad involvement a lot of hip extension. The trap bar deadlift is gonna involve both of those to a pretty large degree, and it's really easy to adjust the handles, and again, it's not gonna load the posterior and the back so heavily. Now, the barbell deadlift does have a lot of application for sport, that's not what I'm saying. However, if we have to look at one over the other when it comes to overall feasibility, generally what's gonna accumulate less stress and fatigue over time, Generally, the trap bar deadlift is gonna take the win, plus you can load it a little bit heavier and perform multiple reps with a little bit more ease because we are displacing anterior and posterior force and stress on the body a little bit easier than just the posterior stress that's gonna come with the barbell deadlift. A third common question that we see with these movements is, which is safer? Let's stop right there. No movement is inherently dangerous. What's dangerous is when we overload movements and we have poor mechanics and we don't check in with ourselves when it comes to our form. So before we even say, oh, the barbell deadlift is way more dangerous than trap bar deadlift, no. What's most dangerous is our lack of knowledge and just overzealous attitude when it comes to loading and so forth. Both of these movements are generally safe to do. I would recommend if you are newer to hire a coach, to watch videos, to watch yourself in your own form analysis and video yourself and really dial in your form to progressively overload in a strategic means based on your abilities. Fourth question, which is best for building a strong back? Great question. So generally speaking, the barbell deadlift will take the edge here. It is a little bit more posterior focus once again. And since we have to pull that bar into the body, we're gonna have a little bit more lat engagement and upper back engagement versus the trap bar deadlift. Now the trap bar deadlift is phenomenal for building the back too. However, if we're trying to isolate and just say, okay, which is gonna be best for back growth, generally the barbell deadlift will take the edge there. Another question we'll commonly see is, which is best for leg growth? Trap bar deadlift. So when we look at the different handle settings and we set that settle, when we set that handle setting lower, we'll mimic a true squatting movement. So we're gonna have almost like a 90 degree knee flexion, sometimes deeper, sometimes a little bit higher based on how tall you are. However, that's gonna open up the availability to involve a lot more quad when driving through that ground in the initial lifting portion when you're breaking the floor. So if you're trying to build stronger legs with one of these movements, generally the trap bar deadlift will be the move and that's gonna be usually with a lower bar setting. You can use a higher bar setting, but you're not gonna get the full range of motion that you're probably looking for. Another great question that you'll see is, which movement can I perform the most regularly? So can I deadlift more than once a week? Can I trap bar deadlift more than once a week? Yeah, you can use both more than once a week. It really just comes down to how you're doing your volume and intensity when you're programming each. Now, generally speaking, the trap bar deadlift will be a little bit easier to program more frequently. And again, that just has to do with how it displaces the force across the body and the feasibility of actually performing it. The barbell deadlift can be a little bit more demanding when it comes to how much it takes out of you if you are loading a little bit heavier, but you can program both multiple times a week. It really comes down to 
how you're using your intensity, volume, and so forth. If you wanna learn a little bit more about these variables, I do offer a course on this and we talk about it in one of our weekly lessons. That's down there, down below. That is Physique Lab. Check it out if you want and you can learn more about this topic in week. Another common question you'll see about these exercises is which is best for developing power? I think it's important that we establish how we're gonna define power and the adaptation we're trying to do. So for a power lifter, for example, and we're trying to improve our power in our deadlift, then being specific with our movement is obviously the ideal case here. So using the deadlift, if you compete with the deadlift. Now for athletes, for example, who wanna improve power, I would lean towards the trap bar deadlift. Generally speaking, we're gonna have similar hip moment patterns with the trap bar and the barbell deadlift. However, we're gonna have a higher knee moment pattern. So we're gonna be able to create a little bit more force with the knee joint because it's gonna be moving through a greater range of motion and stimulating more quad growth. So when it comes to just overall power, the trap bar deadlift is generally gonna be more feasible for the athletic endeavor that wants to improve their running, jumping, and so forth, and being a little bit more strong on their feet. Hopefully this video helped answer some of your questions about the trap bar deadlift and the barbell deadlift. Look, they're two different movements and we need to think of them as two different movements. This will then help us pick out better variations, better exercise selection, and we get strategic program, strategically programming better for ourselves. If you learned anything from this video or if you liked it, drop it a like, drop the channel, subscribe, and if you have any thoughts on this topic and I missed anything, leave me a comment down below. We'd love to have an open conversation with you. Also, 